friends, my name is Semke. Welcome back to a new video on my channel. If this is your first time seeing my face, hi, welcome to the family. Today I'm doing something I haven't done in a really long time, and that is a TBR. This time of year, obviously, a summer TBR with some summer books. Most of these books I actually got quite recently and these are modern classics, most of them, not all of them. Um, if you don't know, I read mainly classics and usually mainly Victorian classics. But there is something about modern classics that just screams summer to me. I think it's the fact that they are very often set during the summer because summer is a very, or at least I <laughs> experience summer as a very nostalgic time of the year. It's like the heat waves make you reminisce about your past and it's just, it, there is a vibe that just fits with modern classics. So a lot of these books are gonna be modern classics and a couple of them I got like literally last week and I'm so excited to talk about them. So get yourself some tea or another drink and sit down, enjoy this video, maybe write down your own TBR for the summer and yeah, let's just get going. So while, while on the topic of modern classics, let's just start with the Penguin modern classics that I have. I have three of them. The first one that I got is The Last Tycoon by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Look at this cover. I love these covers. Look, look at this. This just screams summer nostalgia, doesn't it? Obviously, I haven't read these books yet, so I'm just gonna read you the back to give you a little explanation on what it's about. So... The studio lot looks like 30 acres of fairyland. The night that a mysterious woman stands and smiles at Monroe Star, the last of the great Hollywood princes. Enchanted by one another, they begin a passionate but hopeless love affair, starting with a fast-moving seduction as slick as is seen from one of Star's pictures. The romance unfolds frame by frame, watched by Cecilia, a thoroughly modern girl who has taken her lessons in sentiment and cynicism from all the movies she has seen, same, <laughs> her buoyant humor and sat satirical eye perfectly complement Fitzgerald's panorama, panorama of Hollywood at its most lavish and bewitching. I'm so excited about this because like something that just looks back on like classical Hollywood eras and with Hollywood movie stars and a romance it seems kind of like dangerous I don't know it just it screamed my name and I actually already read the first page because that's I always do that whenever I get a new book I read the first page and this is so intriguing I cannot wait to read this um, I am waiting for the weather to get a bit more hot because right now we're just around like 20 ish degrees and I want it to be heat wave weather when I read this so I'm very excited about it if you want to know my thoughts Definitely keep up with my channel, subscribe, or go follow me on my bookstagram, which is called Femmes Fables, because I will be documenting my reading experience for this for sure. Moving on, I have Evelyn Woe's Bride's Head Revisited. This is one that I've been wanting to read for a very long time. I was gonna buy it last year, but then I actually ended up choosing to buy The Go-Between by L.P. Hartley, which was my favorite book of last year. I cannot shut up about it. I'm forever sad I didn't document my reading experience for it, but it was absolutely magical, <laughs> and now I have this one anyway, so I'm very excited to read it. I'll read you the back once again to give you a little insight in what the story is about. The most nostalgic, that's what I said, like sad nostalgia, and reflective of Evelyn Woe's novels, Brightset Revisited looks back to the golden age before the Second World War. It tells the story of Charles Ryder's infatuation with the flights and the rapidly disappearing world of privilege they inhabit. Enchanted first by Sebastian at Oxford, then by his doomed Catholic family, in particular his remote sister Julia, Charles comes finally to recognize his spiritual and social distance from them. This is what I mean with like that sad nostalgia and looking back at better times. I think that's a very common theme for modern classics and modernist literature, it's that like feeling 
estranged from the current society you're living in and then looking back at the way it used to be like the better times you know and with this quite literally from before the war and it this is just such an interesting concept to me of like how these values changed and so much literally changed in the first half of the 20th century and like change has always been there but I think that's just a very interesting time period when it comes to like ideology and values and social classes in that kind of way I think that is really interesting and I feel like this book is gonna touch upon that very beautifully with also I'm sensing some sort of like mysterious like romance kind of thing I don't know what I'm sensing here but I'm just very very excited <laughs> And then last of the modern classics I have, or well the modern classics like Bingwing editions, I have To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. Believe it or not I've actually never read anything by Virginia Woolf. Um, I read the beginning of Mrs. Dalloway for my English Lit class last semester, um, but I've never read anything fully by her, so I'm very excited to be reading this. I also read the first page of this one already, and there's just a quote I already no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read it to you because I'm definitely gonna make a vlog with this one and I'll include the quote in the vlog. So here's a little cliffhanger to keep you on your toes from when for when my vlog from To the Lighthouse will be out for you guys to see. I haven't read it yet, by the way, but I just know I'm gonna make a vlog. And it's gonna be a good one, so keep your eyes out for that one. Um, but for now I'm just gonna read you the back, <laughs> as I've done with all of these novels. To the Lighthouse is at once a vivid impressionist depiction of a family holiday and a meditation on a marriage, on parenthood and childhood, and on grief, tyranny and bitterness. Its use of stream of consciousness, reminiscence and shifting perspectives gives the novels an intimate poetic essence and at the time of publication in 1927 it, it represented an utter rejection of Victorian and Edwardian literary values. Here we have that again with like the values changing specifically within literature which is also very interesting of course. Virginia Woolf saw the novel as an elegy to her own parents and in her diary she wrote I used to think of him, her father, and mother daily, but writing The Lighthouse led them in my mind. So I'm very excited to read this, I'm very curious to see what actually it is about. I feel like it's not really going to be about anything because you can tell that the back of the novel, like the blurb, is very vague and I think that is the story, like the story will probably be vague. I'm not expecting big plot lines but beautiful prose and ideas and just a sense. I'm going for a feeling. I think it's going to provoke a certain feeling and I'm going to get it, like completely 100% understand what she means, I think. I. It's high praise for a novel I haven't read yet, but I'm just really excited to see what it's all about. I'm gonna take a little sip of my tea because I'm talking so fast, <laughs> my throat is already starting to hurt. <laughs> okay, then moving on, I have The House of Mirth by Edith Warthin. I got this one for Christmas um, last year. Did I already start reading this? Oh, wh why do I have to... I have like literally two <laughs> bookmarks in this already even though I oh no I just remember like I just started reading it because again like I read the first page of a book when I buy it and I guess it was so good that I read two chapters <laughs> I don't remember anything of that though but I got this for myself last Christmas even though I knew I was gonna save it for summer but I was like better better early than late I don't know. Um, again, I'll just read you the back. I don't have a lot to say about this one because it's been on my shelf for quite some time. Like with these, I bought them so recently that I'm still super excited about them. I'm still excited about this one though, but it's just been on my shelf a longer time and I knew I wanted to read it and I've been saving this for the summer for quite a while. So let me just read you what it is about. The House of Mirth tells the story of Lily Bard, aged 29, beautiful, impoverished and in need of a rich husband to safeguard her place in the social elite and to support her expensive habits, her clothes, her charities and her gambling. Unwilling to marry without both love and money, Lily becomes vulnerable to the kind of gossip and slander which attach to a girl who has been on the marriage market for too long. 
Wharton charts the course of Lily's life, providing along the way a wider picture of a society in transition, a rapidly changing New York where the old certainties of manners, morals and family have disappeared and the individual has become an expendable commodity. Um, so this one is was published in October of 1905, actually, so pretty early on, and it's already about those values changing. Um, so even in the early 1900s, we sense that feeling that will, I think, come to be a part of literature for quite a while, because I feel like we see that sense of loss of values in these books as well um, and in this one too. So I think that's like the common theme of these four books. So I'm very excited to see how all of these touch on that subject. Of course this one is a little bit older than the other ones so this will probably be quite different. Also I've never read anything by Edith Wharton Actually, this whole TBR is people I've never read anything from except The, uh, the Great Gatsby, except F. Scott Fitzgerald, because I have read The Great Gatsby, but I've never read Virginia Woolf, never read Evelyn Woe, never read Edith Wharton, and also the two other authors that are coming, I've actually never read anything from, so that's quite exciting. Talking about the two other books that are coming, the next one is Parades End by Ford Maddox Ford, and this is quite literally that same sentiment of old values disappearing. That is such a summer feeling. If you want to know what kind of books I'm reading this summer and what the vibe is for this summer, it is exactly that. I feel like it's fitting too because I'm in a time in my life where, you know, just finished my first year of uni, I'm changing a lot, old values, old me, it's kind of changing. <laughs> Maybe that's why um, I'm reading so many of these kind of books, but this is also a bigger one. I've had this since last summer, got this at the thrift store in this beautiful edition for one euro. I cannot believe this, no, one euro and fifty cents. This stunning edition, it doesn't even look like anyone has read it before. It just looks perfect, perfect condition. I love secondhand books. Perfect. Um, so yes, <laughs> let me read you the back. This is the story of Christopher Teachins, lumpen, awkward, bullish, as his world is shattered by the Great War. In four volumes, Ford's masterly novel of destruction and regeneration traces the psychological damage inflicted by battle and by Teachins' reckless, heartless wife, Sylvia. It is an elegy again, <laughs> for the war dead and the passing of England secure in Wardian values and a work of extraordinary innovation and profundity. So all of these books <laughs> so far sound the same but with a different font. It's like same text, different font if you know what I mean. Um, but I think it's so interesting when authors write about like the same thing and I think I think it, it says something about the vibes in society during the 1900s, 20s, 30s, 40s, you know what I mean? Like, it says something about about that era um, in history. But I'm very excited for this one too. It's pretty long, but I've read the first, again, read the first page and it seemed to go pretty, pretty well. So I'm just excited about this one, like all of the books. I feel like I don't have a lot to say about these books. Like I just read you the back and I say I'm excited. <laughs> but that's just the that's the vibe. That's what I'm feeling. I'm feeling excited about all of these books. So yeah. Um I do have one more book. This one is a bit different. It is Vanity Fair by W. M. Thackeray. I've also had this one for like a year now on my bookshelves, or two maybe even two years? No, a year. I don't know. I don't remember. Where's the time where I remembered from each book where and when I got it? <laughs> it's gone. That that time is over. Um, this one has a sticker over the back, so I'm gonna see if I can get rid of that. Okay, what it says is the St. James's Assemblies, the Pleasure Gardens of Thaw Hall, the Glittering Charades at Grand House and the Gilded Salons of Brussels. Oh, Belgium. Um, alive to the enchantment of the waltz, all provide a 
scintillating backdrop to the age of Waterloo wherein two young girls, the opposite in looks, temperament and morals, play out the drama of Vanity Fair. Does that tell us anything? I don't know. Don't don't think so. Um I don't have I could look up I probably could look up what it's about, but I really don't know. I really don't know what it's about. But it just looks cool. I've been wanting to read it for a while. The only thing is I really don't like my edition. I got it because it was only 50 cents, but now I'm like, I should should take better care to look at what edition I'm buying because this is just the pages are super thin and I don't like the font, like it's super small and that scares me and also there's like this thing like it always falls open on that spot because it's just super cracked so i'm not i'm not sure if it's going to be comfortable to read but i do really want to read it and i feel like this summer is going to be the time and i just have to get over myself because i do want to read it so i'm like do i get rid of this one and get a new one but that would be stupid so i'm just We'll just do with this one. I'm sorry that I couldn't tell you literally anything of what it's about. <laughs> Pan classics are not my favorite. So these are all the books I want to be reading this summer. Of course I want to be reading even more than that. Um, but these are all specifically summer books that I saved for now. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know which books you want to read this summer or what you're currently reading. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay reading, and I'll see you next time. Bye!